everyone. Welcome to 30 Wordy and Friendship. I'm Whitney Ensom. And I'm Aliyah Bogdanoff. And this is episode nine. nine. And we are going to be talking about self-care and saying no. Something that we've been both thinking about, uh, growing in. And we want to talk about how important it is for us and just uh, encourage other people to do self-care too. So Yeah. yeah. So, first of all, as we always start every episode, and I think it's just important, I know, we're not going to change, um, we're going to define it. So, Whitney, yeah. what does self-care mean to you? Oh, gosh. Well, self-care has been something that I feel like has been forced upon me over <laughs> <laughs> over the last five years. I'm a social worker, so it's one of those things they tell you about in school, like, yeah. don't crush under pressure. Just help yourself by doing things for self-care so you don't burn out. Well, yeah, because everything you do is constantly giving and helping others. So I could see that you have to give back into yourself. Yes. And some of it is like, well, I guess I'll do that. But it's been a gradual process of figuring out what it means to do, like what what things to do to help me feel restored. So I think self-care is doing things or sometimes not doing things Mm -hmm. that um, make me feel calm and at peace Mm. and strong enough to deal with whatever that day ahead of me brings, whether it's at work with uh, patients or um, with my personal life. And so self-care is things that bring me joy and peace. And uh, sometimes it's activity, sometimes it's staying home and uh, doing nothing. Mm. So yeah, that's my my answer. (laughs) How about self-care for you? Well, self-care is really new for me. I thought it was a trendy word that meant <laughs> bibbly bunk. I was like, that's dumb. That's one of those it's new, like, <laughs> new trendy things that people do. Like, like quinoa? Yeah. Yeah, like, like quinoa. It's quinoa. like kale. <laughs> like, you don't really need it, and we were all surviving before without it. So I really did it. <laughs> So I really thought it was stupid and I hated when people were like, and now make sure you self care. I was like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't like manicures and pedicures. So <laughs> that's out. Don't shove that on me. <laughs> but it happened for me when my therapist, when I first started therapy um, and I was explaining all the things I wanted to talk about, she said like, what do you do for self care? And I was like, lady, there's a lot of other things we need to cover. That's, that's for later. And she was like, no, you need to do these things for you so that while we're doing this work, you know, you have something that you're giving back into mm-hmm. your life. And so I was like, I don't know. I used to paint when I was young. So I like went out and bought mm-hmm. like watercolors. Yeah. And I thought that was it. Like, well, I'll do watercolors. And I did it once and that never went anywhere. I put like $100 on watercolors that I never used. <laughs> yes. And that wasn't it. And I, I completely missed the boat. And it took me a while to figure out what it was. Um, and the first thing I did that was self-care was this podcast. Mm. Wow. So I didn't understand because it was something that I do yeah. that's just about me, something, topics, expressions, and creativity that I enjoy. Yes. And um, I have to sacrifice other parts of my life, like my time with my children and my husband, to accomplish it. And that's mm-hmm. kind of an important aspect mm-hmm. is when you're, a, when you're a mom and you're, a, so you're an all-day, everyday caretaker, yeah. all you do is take care of other people. And I literally, my list would never end. But I take a pause from that to do something that I love and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And it uh, it has brought me a lot of creativity. I I think about it on my off time. I think about it when I'm doing Mm -hmm. chores. And it's something that that motivates me and keeps me going. Um, The other self-care that I do is I spend a lot of time with friends. Mm -hmm. Um, And that sometimes that's in the version of like a play date. But a lot of times that's... You know, spending time with you, Whitney, or spending time with another yes. friend. Dinner dates are big for me. I love going out to dinner with a friend and just hang out, just the two of us. So, yeah, I yeah. like that you said a pause. I think that that's really huge. It's like all of these things are going on around us that we have to do, that we we want to do. We want to spend yeah. time with people. We do yeah. work. We take care of our family. But it's like a pause of I deserve this time yeah. to take care of me. Um, it's like that. They tell you on the airline in the in the airplane about um, putting your oxygen mask on yes, first. Yes. And I, I've, you know, I'm sure you've heard that as well. The that um, metaphor used with self care of if I don't take care of myself first, how in yeah. the world will I take care of other people around me, my family, my people I interact with, uh, interact with at work, like patients or whatever job that we do, if we don't stop, pause. Yeah. 
and do those things, then we're not going to really be able to show up as yeah. well for those things and those people. We'll just be empty. In our lives. Yes. And I yes. think it's, um, I, I'll say this, I will take a stand. It is harder as a mother than any other sure. time in your life because, because you're, everybody around you is so constantly needy and your job's never mm. done. And there's, there's always more dishes mm-hmm. and laundry. And I know people who don't have kids have those things too, but mm-hmm. you don't, you, you could literally as a parent never do anything for yourself and yeah. just continue to survive. And I think I did that. Um, especially when I stopped working because working a lot of working was for me Mm. I really enjoyed it when I had my second and I really felt the need to stay home I felt super lost in that job because it's not like you go you know eight to five and those are your responsibilities and then when you get off you get to go have fun Mm. with kids Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's no fun (laughs) time like you it's all about them all the time and they never stop needing you to do something for them and like maybe sometimes you get to like like I think I really dove into television when I became mm. a stay at home mom because it was literally the only thing that I did all day for me and I could have it running in the background while I did dishes and mm-hmm. stuff and still spend time with my children and play with them and do stuff but it it was the only thing going back into that I liked beside you know that mm-hmm. was for me so mm-hmm. I think it's a really yeah. difficult it's a it's a guilt point it's for hard a to, lot of moms you have to prioritize it uh but how do you prioritize it when yeah. you have all of these oh yeah little people to I'm take sure, care yeah, of i'm sure any mom do. is like who doesn't do it is like yeah well find me the time yeah find me the time and i'm sure my child will throw up on that time and i'll be cleaning up throw up off the carpet and that's right? very real and so it, it's it is a i would say when you're in a family it has to be a family effort mm. because my husband is very on board and he is really great and he knows when I need to do something and yeah. he took care of the kids for a weekend so I could go to Disneyland. Mm, I mean, that was huge amazing. for me. I hadn't been on a vacation without my children or my husband in like five years and it was like the first time I went somewhere mm. and didn't take care of anyone. Wow. And it was like, it gave me new life. That's so amazing. Whitney, you need to talk about the things you do because you do a <laughs> lot of really cool things. You have even better ideas. Oh, I don't know about better. Different, <laughs> different right? Different, different we have cool different. Ideas. We have different... Uh, uh, lives, but uh, we uh, come together to do things together as well. So for me, I, I really do well. I find that I'm happiest and healthiest when I take a break and go to the mountains mm. and hike if possible or just um, go on a road trip. Mm. I have the ability to do that, not having any children. It's a little bit easier, <laughs> um, but I I really think it's important to just kind of break off from Mm -hmm. what's happening with my feelings about work, not taking that home, um, with what's happening in my relationships just to disconnect. Mm -hmm. I um, went to a a retreat last year with a friend, um, and the topic was on silence and solitude. Mm. And, uh, we had this day of like 10 hours of being quiet. And that, of course I don't, (laughs) I don't know how to sit still for 10 hours. <laughs> Took a nap. Then I read the, in the Bible, which was the focus of that, and went on a hike and napped again because I was tired from... We were on the road like five days before that, three, three, whatever it was. So I I feel like that has been a theme since last year where I've been a social worker for many years, but in the last year or so, realizing what it is, yeah. it's not just doing things, it's whatever it is that brings me silence and solitude. Mm. So I could be driving somewhere on my own. I could be in the mountains hiking. Um, I could be in my own home and (laughs) disconnected from people because sometimes that, I'm realizing more and more, that is self-care for me sometimes too. As a person who I identify as an introvert, that I get my energy by being sometimes by myself or with friends. So also another self-care that you spoke of, Aaliyah, about spending time with people, I really, even though I love alone time, I really need connection yeah. and people who I'm real with and, yes. and to spend time with those people that fills my bucket. I have like, I think of it like a bucket, have like a Whitney bucket. I have a Whitney bucket, like a self-care Whitney bucket. Yeah. You have your bucket too. And how we fill it up depends on who we are as a person, our abilities in whatever role we're in. But for me, it's really nurturing that silence and solitude and being active, being active is really important to me as well. So trying yeah. to prioritize that um, while also making time for people. I think it's a mental thing too. It's it's or it's like an attitude towards yourself. Mm-hmm. It's an asking yourself what you need. 
Mm-hmm. And sometimes, yes. and again, I love this because it's so different for both of us. So sometimes for me, because I, the things I do every day and they're, you know, repetitive mm-hmm. and, you know, they're all very, they seem very menial, but they're important. Sure. Um, sometimes I have to ask myself, like, what do you need today? Now, if I have a really oh. rough day where I'm just going constantly and the kids were rough and we had, you know, a lot of uh, mishaps, just the next day I'll usually be like, I'll wake up and I'll be like, Elio, what do you need today? Yes. And it seems really silly, but sometimes I'll, I'll my answer is like, I need today to not just be about accomplishing chores. Mm-hmm. Um, today I'm going to just sit and play with my kids, yeah. but I'm going to like take the pressure off of needing to accomplish so much and I get it you're probably like thinking what listening to this like well great for you that you get to do that but no it's it's a choice it's a lifestyle Mm -hmm. choice that choice sometimes my house is messy and sometimes my dishes aren't done and sometimes I need vacuuming but Mm -hmm. I if I just push myself every day to just keep this perfect shell around of of accomplishing tasks then my life starts to feel really Mm -hmm. empty inside and I'm not really spending time with my kids I'm just making sure they're atmosphere yeah. is perfect and that's not important to me mm-hmm. so I would rather have laundry like right now we're sitting in a room in my house and there's laundry <laughs> in this room in almost every room of the house it's all clean <laughs> it just needs to be folded right. but like I spent time with Nova this morning hanging out and laughing with her and yeah. spending time with my friend when I was supposed to be folding laundry it'll get <laughs> it done was eventually wonderful. or we'll just live out of baskets for the week and you know I, I'd, I'd still come hang out with you it's so good and like <laughs> I would rather do something that gives back to my heart and makes my life feel full Mm -hmm. than try to just keep up because the list never ends. The list doesn't end. Yeah. So let's talk to about the second part of this about saying no. So we, we talked about this being kind of a coupling idea because we can just, when you're not taking care of yourself, it's usually Mm because you're, you have no boundaries and you are saying yes to everything and everyone. So Whitney, (laughs) I want you to start with. (laughs) <laughs> why is it important to say no and what does that mean in self-care? Well, I had an experience recently about um, a week ago where, okay, so back up. I I hike a lot and I attempted to go hiking and long story short, I sprained my ankle and I'm doing this challenge where I'm trying to do this as many hikes as I can by the end of the year and I've been saying yes to, on the side, I've been saying yes to spend time with this friend, do this thing. Yeah. And I felt things just kind of speeding up. Like mm. I just have so much on my plate. And, um, one of my coworkers, a friend, she, um, she said to me the other day, you know, um, I'm glad that you canceled on me the, uh, a few weeks ago. Cause I realized that you wouldn't have done, like you would have felt bad if I had said, Hey, maybe we can do another time. You would have been like, no, 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 let's still hang out. And she said, it's almost like a, like a, how did she describe it? Almost like a, like you're trying to fit me in. Mm. And that, um, gosh, that was so humbling because that's not my heart. Yeah. And I think saying no is difficult because what if I don't get to see that person in a while? I have friends who are moms, my sisters are, you know, moms and all these people that I enjoy spending time with. If I need to, I need to find time. I need to fit into my calendar. I have this many days off. You're communicating that you don't care about them. You don't care about the friendship. Yeah. And I love spending time with people and I love doing, going places. But lately I've felt like I'm not saying no. And my, my body is unfortunately paying the, the consequences for that. And so saying no, I think for, for me, it really, um, that's part of self care of knowing, um, like you were saying about uh, Leah, about the um, you know waking up and saying I just need to yeah. uh, be with my kids, and I've I think that's important to wake up and say there's a lot of things I should do. Yeah, there's a lot of things I know I need to do. Right, there's things that I really want to do, but right. am I in the space to do those things today? Yeah, because that's when we're just maybe not present. This is for me. I'm yeah. just not as present in those moments right. with those people doing those things when I have so much on every other burner. When I mean, you're just trying to check boxes in your life. Wonderful, so... beautiful boxes. Yeah, good boxes. <laughs> good boxes. But it starts to feel really but... empty. And, it over... and, o- and overwhelming. Yes, and overwhelming. Yeah. Like each moment is, oh yeah, that was fun, but okay, now what's next? And so yeah. saying no, uh, it's been a week of saying no and I have a couple more weeks of <laughs> saying no left to heal. And it's actually really helped to slow down Mm -hmm. and deliberately uh, part of really some of it hasn't been a choice. I can't move as much, but to really 
recognize all the things on my plate and say, can this wait? Or maybe yeah. I can do that another day. Or Because that's part of self-care is checking in. Yeah. And with if yourself. you are going so fast and yeah. you have such a whirlwind around you mm-hmm. and you and to be honest, like, yes, we have whirlwind lives, but like we feed into it. Yes. We do a ton. <laughs> we are we the put producers. The things on the calendar. Yeah. And yeah. we say yes to things. And yeah, we, we do. And so what happens is we fill our lives so full and then we think if we take anything off or we're not accomplishing things, we don't feel good. But we have to get those off to ask ourselves, like, what's going on with me? How mm-hmm. am I doing? Checking in mm-hmm. with, you know, it's really important to understand what's happening in your heart and mind. Even yeah. if the answer is, like, lately my answer has been like, I kind of feel numb a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. okay. But it's like, that's where I am. My husband asked me the other day, like, hey, how are you feeling about some things that are going on in our life? And I was just like, I don't feel anything. And mm. that's all right. I don't feel anything. I'm I'm trying to pursue just like, what is it? You know, how do I feel about these things? But I'm just feeling nothing right now. And I'm not sure why, but I'm paying attention to mm. me. And that's a big part of self-care. I think the first step that I made for self-care was just going to therapy. Yeah. And I was yeah, yeah, so yeah. excited. <laughs> I was like, One hour to oh, yourself to, to work me. on you. Talk like, about you. There's think this person about in the room just like, tell me more about you. You're like, <laughs> I'll tell you everything. I was so excited to go to therapy because it meant that I was going to be taking an intentional time every mm-hmm. week to work on myself yeah. and to have someone who was very capable walk me down mm-hmm. that path and... That was the first thing I did that mm. was just all about me. Yeah. And it benefits mostly me. And it's it's yeah. the time I think about what I'm going through and how I'm feeling. And it helps me decompress. Because if you don't have those things and you're just mm-hmm. trying to fill your life with a bunch of stuff, um, eventually you'll just feel empty. And you'll yeah. just burn out. And you won't know why you don't feel those things. Yeah. So... I think saying, so it sounds like saying no for both of us. It's, it's hard because we love people so I do much. Love we people. love things. We have to put ourselves first sometimes. Yeah, and, and when people text me, they miss me. I'm like, okay, <sighs> I bring my calendar. I'm like, when can I fit you in? Yes. But uh, when, what when, did you just say? When, when can, can I, I fit, fit you, you in? in? Yeah, because right. it just starts to feel. So I kind of have a personal rule that I oh, don't sure. hang out with friends more than three days a week. Oh, because if I hang yeah. out with too many people, because with us moms, you get to do like play dates mm-hmm. and stuff. If I hang out with too many people, um, I start to kind of feel overwhelmed mm-hmm. socially mm-hmm. because I still have so much responsibilities at home and the stuff I need to do at home do suffer. And then I, so that's a social rule that I have like three days a week and then I'm good. Yeah. And if it's more than that, I've noticed that um, I'm like super burned out. And by that last person, I'm just like phoning yeah, it in. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's kind of for my relationships too. Yeah. Um, and I'm really okay with canceling on people and just explaining to them that, hey, it's been a rough week. I'm so fortunate to have children that I can blame everything on. <laughs> Be- that's <laughs> so sick. true. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, and, and, it, yeah. and it's true because it really does happen. Like yeah. sometimes your kids don't sleep at night yeah. and you're up half the night and you realize I can't do no. my thing that, and I just cancel. And you know what? Good friends, yeah. Good friends will stick it out with you. Bad yep. friends will just disappear. And guess yep. what? Congratulations, you just got rid of a bad friend. Right? Or will like make you feel bad for it? Like, yeah. oh, I was really looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, well, I was looking forward to seeing you too. Yeah, I was too. But because I think we all have those moments of um, needing to say no, something comes up, or yeah. we wake up and we're like, now nah, I'm not feeling it. And I saw this, you know the. Fear of missing out. Yeah, I saw FOMO. I, fo- then there's the JOMO, joy of missing out. <laughs> I saw that recently, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is my life." Because sometimes I wake up and the person cancels, and I think, "Oh, oh my gosh, God. thank you." So much. What's the best? My favorite is when somebody tells me, "Sorry, I'm not going to make it today," and I forgot that I made plans with them, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, it's totally fine," and I had other plans and I'm like oh thank god I almost it happened to me last week where I forgot yes. to show up to something and oh, the person no. canceled thank god I, I was supposed to be at their house in an hour oh, no. and they canceled and I was like oh that sucks okay see you later see you next time because I'm not even in the city no. <laughs> sorry sorry about okay, that so I have to ask you now this yes. is the biggest thing how do you know how do you evaluate and how do you recognize when you need to say no to something I feel it. I have to feel it. I feel it in my bones. <laughs> in my soul. Do you I feel like a, like a little down. anxiety? A little bit. Yeah. Like for me, it's um, 
I, it just feels incongruent. Like I felt oh. it the morning I went to go hike, I sprained my ankle. Ooh. I was like, oh, I don't do. want to get out of bed. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't want get to out of, get out of bed this early. Yeah. I want to stay home. But I think um, that's my most recent example with, yeah. with people. It's um, there's something going on for me emotionally maybe or, or just time management wise where I think, you know, uh, I just don't feel as, as open. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe just it does feel like there's a little bit of anxiety there. You get a there. sense. Yeah. You like, get a this sense isn't, that something this isn't fit. Isn't, you're trying to force it. Yes. That's how I feel like. You feel like you're forcing I'm, it. I'm saying yes to something I really don't want to go to. And I... <laughs> I always feel like seven years old when I know I'm not, because I feel like I'm like, I don't want to go. You, know, you, can't like that, like, you can't make me. can't make me go. And I'm like, okay, what well, excuse can I make? I want to make yeah, an yeah, excuse. Yeah. But sometimes, like, I just have to be honest with people that I, yes. I'm yes, i feeling yes. so much, like, I just really don't want to go. It's giving me so much anxiety. And I get it. Commitments are really important. This episode is not about commitment, though. No. We're talking about caring we'll about, about you. So it, it's... For me, um, I start to feel like um, I'm running through the motions. And yeah. and when I'm there, I don't want to be there. And I'm saying yes. And there's usually a guilt, a shame, yeah. or a feeling of not being good enough and trying mm. to prove myself behind it. Mm. So again, that part of self-care is checking in and asking yourself, like, why am I doing this? Because if you're showing up and you're not feeling it, then you're not being congruent with yourself of how you're feeling and you're just not even present yeah. in the moment you're in. You're kind of, I don't know about you, but I end up feeling kind of resentful. Like, I don't really want to be here. Yeah. It doesn't happen that often, I think, resentful. But it's like, I would I would have rather this happened when I was in a better space to yeah. be present with you. Yeah. And I think the people in our lives that we should surround ourselves with are people who can handle disappointment. Maybe yeah. they were really looking forward to seeing us or... Maybe they haven't seen some people in a while and they were looking yeah. forward to interaction. But it's important. Self-care is saying, not that we need to be selfish, like, I deserve this. But, well, yeah, I deserve to put my oxygen mask on first yeah. and take care of me. Because that also makes me feel better, but also models to other people, this is how I take care of myself. Yeah. And I found that most people are like, you know what, thanks for letting me know that's okay. We'll, we'll figure something else out. Yeah. And then I know, oh, I have good people who also, they've done that for me too. And I, yeah. and I am, I'm most of the time really gracious about it. I'm like, oh, I'm bummed, but I go, I, I've been there. Like yeah. I think in my head, cause you did that before yeah. you know how it feels to be the one who says, I care about you. Um, but I just, I can't make this work today with yeah. the things that I have going on. I think those people are gems in our lives who can, meet us where we are with that and not hold us like not make us feel bad for that but to to really understand that there's times where we all feel a little burned out and yeah and sometimes you go through a season where you just feel tired like you do this season of like literal season like mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. weather change season oh yeah I do really bad for like three months mm. when the weather changes I especially when it starts doing this flip floppy thing I get sick. I get this off and on fatigue. My kids mm. get sick. It kind of starts like go. Everyone starts throwing up for mm. some reason randomly, mm-hmm. and and this is a time when I like you. I kind of disappear a little bit mm. because for me, if I'm trying to just be at everything and you know not sleeping and all that, I just again I do, I just don't enjoy it. So I've had to come to terms with accepting the fact that like I do better in my life when I give us space to yeah. to get over things and to get past things and mm. everyone understands being like my child's been throwing up so yeah it was like yeah oh yeah that's fine no one wants to be around a sick kid right or pass it along yeah but um I think also I'm trying to think of when I used to work and you can probably talk about this a little bit too is like saying no at work it's really hard mm. because um you know I'm an over I'm such an overachiever when I do anything um mm-hmm. and so when I used to work I used to try to be everything to everyone. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a bad habit. Mm. And I do that. I did that with my husband and my children. I tried to be everything to everyone. Yeah. And I didn't say no. And my, my, my husband would recommend me to go do something <laughs> when I would tell him that I was burnt out. And, he, and I'd be like, I can't. Mm. But see, that was my problem. Yeah. That was because I really wasn't... It was like, I was being like a little bit of a martyr. Mm. And I think as moms, like, it feels good to be a martyr. Because... 
you at least can say I'm a good mom. Like you can lean on the I'm a good mom if you just do nothing for yourself. Mm. Like you don't buy I've anything so for yourself. Much for my yeah, kids. you just yeah. do everything for your mm-hmm. children. At least you don't have to live wondering if you're okay or not, or if mm-hmm. you're doing a good job. And it's such there's so much of your, of your identity as a mom wrapped up in if you're good at it or not. Yeah. So we sometimes get that a little confused with doing these. And when I talk to other moms, they say like, yeah, I don't. I can't remember the last time I bought something for myself. Like mm. I'm wearing clothes that don't fit and I'm, you know, wearing makeup yeah. that's half broken. And, and that's because we, we don't know how mm. we don't know how to do those things, but that kind of leads us to our last question, which is where do you start? If you're, <laughs> if you're saying yes, like, yes, I do not take care of myself. So why yeah. don't you tell I, us a little bit where, where do we start? Um, what's important to us? What do we Mm -hmm. value? What is our personality like? And what we know when we're our best selves, what are we doing? Who are we around? Yeah. Are we not doing anything? Are we, um, yeah. Where are we? Who are we with? What's important to us? What do we value? I think that slowly gets us to a place of sometimes it's slow because for me it was of this is what I need in order to let go of this, um, um, this is what I, who I need to spend time with to feel restored because like earlier we talked and I yeah. felt, I feel, um, it's important to, uh, just be real with feelings sometimes of where we're at and that's what friendship is about. And so, um, I think just, I feel my best when A, B, C, D, whatever it is. And for me, it's I'm outside or I'm with people or I'm on a trip and, uh, seeing some place or sometimes I'm home watching Netflix and yeah. knowing like each one of those is good for what it is and kind of trusting myself to stay to say um, this thing is okay in that moment and I might want to do something later but right now yeah. this is what I need so what I think all of us can ask what also what time do what amount of time do we have? You and I yeah. are in different, have different places in life, time. right? So yeah, sometimes I have like 30 minutes a day. So what can I do in 30 minutes yeah. that I value? You mentioned art earlier. So can yeah. I can I paint or can I um, uh, call a friend for yeah. a half hour? So it's how much time do we have? What do we want to do? And what, what do we need for ourselves to feel restored and um, refreshed so that we can continue to do day in and day out, whether yeah. it's at a job or as the job as taking care of littles Mm -hmm. and yeah, I think what, what do we need? And we don't always ask ourselves that because we're thinking, Oh, I'm taking care of this and this is important. But there's, if we really reflect on it, there's things that we know we're good at things we enjoy doing, but maybe we've neglected them or put them aside or forgotten about them for a while because maybe there wasn't time, but each of us has the same amount of time in a day. Yeah. And we, how do we, reconfigure our day whatever we have for that day with people and our our roles to even just have a small amount of time where we really invest in ourselves that's that's the word invest in ourselves okay so what are your thoughts what are your thoughts about this okay you know when i get these i just mid podcast ideas you just pray (laughs) that it's not weird so when my therapist first asked me what do you like to do as a hobby i said i don't have hobbies Mm. and i don't know and it was the weirdest question because I literally got a blank when I tried to think of my interests. Yeah. Like, so this is what we're going to do. And you as the listener, you're going to participate too. So get ready. You get to be uncomfortable <laughs> too. <laughs> you're going to love it. I'm getting like. We're going to do a. Okay. Yeah, you're getting what nervous. You get like, <laughs> okay. We're going to do a Spitfire list. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back and forth. And we're okay. going to list things. We're going to list things. And they can be activity, physical things. They can be set like the essence of something. We're going to okay. list things back and forth. And you as a listener, you're going to make either mental notes or you're going to write down with paper. Um, as you hear, you'll know when you like something. And okay. you'll be like, oh, yeah, that sounds interesting. Are you All ready? Right. Ready. Okay. We're going to go start. fast because we're going to do okay. Okay. You start. Reading. Hiking. Uh, writing. Tea with friends. <laughs> I love tea so much. <laughs> tea alone. Tea. <laughs> tea, tea went, anywhere. I'm guard, I'm guard. Tea. Teeing I'm, off. Tea. Tea. Like if you like to golf. I can't golf. <laughs> but some of you listeners might like to golf. Tea. Okay. Uh, uh, your turn. It's my turn. Um, going for a walk. Going to boot camp. Uh, creating a playlist of music I like. Sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> this 
<laughs> um, I like calling a friend and having an honest, good, Ooh. heartfelt talk. Yes. Where you sometimes cry. Um, I will second that. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> second in mine. Yeah, I did. Going to dinner with a friend. Okay. And sometimes drinking a little. <laughs> I say a little because I don't recommend just drunkenness, but like having a drink with a friend. Playing with my nieces and nephews. <laughs> You're going to say playing with your knees. I'm just going to not recommend. <laughs> playing with your children. <laughs> playing with anybody's children. I just want to squeeze the babies. Squeeze the babies. <laughs> not too hard. Um, let's see. Uh, what is it? Are we, when are we done? Are we Whenever done? we feel it. Oh, um, uh, having a check-in with my husband and telling him, I need like 10 minutes of good, mm. like, focus talk where you're looking at me. And I'm ex- just telling you how I'm feeling right now. That's a big one for me. That's huge. And just like, because you just tend in marriage to like, when you have kids just reporting. Like, I paid this bill. I fed this child. They pooped on this thing. Yes. And I fixed it. And so just saying like, I need like this or I need alone time. Yeah. Alone time's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. A sport. I have more. Okay. T- a sport. You, you keep playing going. a sport. Okay, uh, playing even a sport. as an adult. Like I used to think I used to play volleyball. <gasps> I love volleyball. <laughs> I can't do it now. I don't know if I could do it now, but I used to at the well, they have like volleyball. Oh things, yeah. They had to show up yeah. and I would play volleyball. And that was, Oh my gosh. I come alive when I play volleyball. Yes. Um, Felt of, of um, being with other believers, being, talking about yeah. what God's oh, doing yeah. in my life. And oh, I love that. Being being there for people. Yeah. Having a conversation with a friend where I, it's nice to have people we can cry with, but yeah. people who need to be real with us and bring them, bring, bear each other's burdens. Taking someone one. to lunch. Just yes. Just not paying for somebody's food that I love. Letting, going to lunch and letting them pay for you. Getting a massage. Oh. oh I love Chiropractor. Massage. Chiropractor. <laughs> That's what I did today. Going to therapy. Going to therapy. <laughs> Uh, making time to slow down. Girl, preach. Leaving the dishes and the laundry and not being afraid of somebody coming over and seeing my dishes and laundry. Doing the dishes and laundry that you <laughs> haven't done in a really long time. <laughs> and you're kind of embarrassed about because you've been too busy gallivanting you somewhere else. You had your dishes for me the other day and I went in the wrong place. You were like, no, 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 no. No, oh, that's where my dishes are. Dang it. You're like, literally what happened? I'm like, I, I didn't get anything done before. Nothing's Gosh, perfect. Your house is so clean. My house is filthy all the time. Not filthy. I don't live in a It's not filthy. You, you live in stuff everywhere stuff. because I have You have little. children. You have a And husband. I just get tired of picking new thoughts. Okay. <laughs> um, ooh, decor. I love going decor shopping. Oh. That makes my heart fly. Throw blankets and candles. Ooh, yeah. That's Sitting good... with a blanket around you. Yes. With candles. While crying. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm crying. I love crying. You Staring guys don't your understand. Christmas tree? Yes. Okay, oh. okay, okay. <gasps> Seeing Christmas lights. Okay. Oh, Macy's at all oh, the windows. Stop. Christmas tree lane. Oh, we're getting into Christmas stuff. Christmas music. I oh, love it's Christmas the music. Best. It makes me happy. Uh, taking McCoy to see his first Christmas oh. house. One house that has Christmas lights. And he wanted to go meet. He's three. He asked me if we could go meet the people. Because he liked them so much. Adorable. Yeah. That I really just like made them, me so happy. The ones that like light up with music. You're like, what's happening? This is amazing. <laughs> putting down my phone and stopping just binging Facebook and Instagram. Oh. But like. Putting it down. I, my friend Adriana, who listens to these sometimes, would love me. Uh, I'm st- I am started a book, Adriana. I told her, yeah, I don't read. <laughs> she was like, hey, can I recommend a book or give you a book? And I was like, I don't read. No. And she was like, what? And I was like, I can't. Like, when do I have time? And I read for the first time last night in <gasps> probably a year. And for an hour. That's like amazing. I normally go to bed, like, right when my kids do because I'm just so tired. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to take an hour, and in the quiet Love it. of night, I just read for an hour, and it was incredible. The quiet of the night. And I just took read. my time. I think that's the other thing. It's like doing something where you just take yeah. your time and not rushing and not just trying to accomplish mm-hmm. it. Like, I was no, like, if I only get through boxes. 10 pages, I'm just, I'm really just doing something really intentional and investing in my life. Yep. That's what, if, and dancing. <gasps> oh, when yeah. music comes oh, on, you are just a dancer. Dancing. Mm-hmm. Darn it, just dance. Just dance. Bring you into song. Yeah, okay, that's, <laughs> that's mine. Nice. Breaking into song. You're always breaking into. I'm song. always at work. I, yeah. it's just it's like it's I so feel you. like I'm that if annoying coworker. Oh, I know the song, and they're usually old songs. Like yeah. I didn't listen to a lot of like 80s or 70s, but yeah. I know little parts of songs and. 
and it just it brings me joy. Yeah. I don't know about all my coworkers. Yeah, I kind of feel bad for them know. a little bit. We're never gonna. Ask well, them. I probably <laughs> won't because they're gonna be like, "Can you stop now?" <laughs> Some of them sing along with me. You know what? Sometimes taking a time to have fun with my kids instead of just trying to accomplish something. Like this morning, my son would not come out of his bedroom. So I put on the song, I'm coming out. The, you know, the old one? Coming, coming out. out. And I danced coming. outside of his bedroom until yes. he joined me because he wouldn't come out. And <laughs> I really amazing. needed him to get to school. But it, what happens to me is I, I just it. get so rushy in the morning. And I say we're going to be late like 20 times. So instead, yeah. we just did a dance party. Yes. And we listened to that. And, and that was like a self-care thing. Just instead of being irritated, I took a time to have fun. That's what it's Love really it. about. It's like Taking fun is the time. Really, this okay, real quick side note. <laughs> it super annoys me that we talk so much about how important play is for children. It is. It's this new thing in the last what, 10 years? Sure. Play, play, play. I get it. That's great. We do it. What about us? We deserve I play, need to play too. There should be studies on what play does for, for adults. human brains. Yes. Like what if I want to go jump on a trampoline? Yeah. I heard an ad on the ra- this is totally cool. I heard an ad on the radio the other day about a concert my old favorite band Third Eye Blind. I no joke <laughs> called my husband. Yeah. And I've never done this. He's like buy tickets. And I was like, "What?" And he's like, "We're going." And I was like, yes. "What?" And he was like, "And I You know what it does? It's in like December, I think. I have this like excitement yes. for that day because it's like a really old favorite band of mine, Third Eye Blind. Ah. Grew up on it, and I'm super stoked. I'm so excited for and you. And it's like it's something I'm looking I'm looking forward, forward to. Forward. Things. Looking, looking forward, forward to, to things. things. That is good self care. If you don't look forward to anything right now, you need to do something. Just anything, like your Amazon order that's coming that you ordered. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it, not Prime, so you have more time yes, to enjoy it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> like, when's the latest they can send it to me? Delay? Yes, delay it. Delay it as long as possible. <laughs> okay, I think we did enough. Did I we do think it? so. Okay, so that's all the ideas. Those are just a, we, a drop yeah. in the bucket of things you can do. We know that all of you are in different stages and uh, places in life with, I mean, you think about... You know, sometimes we don't have the money to do something or That's the time to do one. something. Yeah. It doesn't have to be huge uh, thing. Or it can be or expensive. Like wake up at a certain time and read or something simple where it's achievable and something that you want to do. And it's a part of, I think, taking control of your life because you can let everybody else control your life and yeah. just be a victim. And it's it sounds... Small, but you can be a victim to everybody, mm-hmm. and it's a pleasing thing. Yeah, I did it before because I just wanted everyone to be happy with me, and I thought if I spend all my time dedicating to these kids and to my husband, they'll never, they'll never say they're not happy with me because I'm just giving them everything. But guess what? They were kind of a little unhappy with me because I was grouchy. Right. I was a little. I, I you, was like kind yeah. of irritating. So you noticed a difference? Would you say? Oh my for gosh! You? I was telling my husband the other day. I was like, I can't even remember the last time I was mad at you. Wow. Like, that's big in a marriage. I was like, it's been months since I was, like, angry with you. And and he was like, I think it's because you're taking care of yourself. And he literally was like, since you started this podcast. Yeah. And therapy. And therapy. And since you've been allowing yourself to do things that you enjoy and making plans and going on trips, he was like, this is the happiest I've ever seen you because... um, Because you're taking care of yourself. And so you don't need these massive... Like getting really mad at my husband breakdowns mm-hmm. to blame him because I don't feel good. Mm-hmm. It's not about and him. It's about now how he you're makes feeling mistakes, I yes. am like strangely gracious. And yeah. I'm just like, hey, it's okay. We're going to work this through. And I like feel this weird, like, oh, my wick is long. That's what it is. Oh, I have a long you're wick not, right now. You're slow to burn. I'm you're not, not you're on slow to, the edge. Yeah. And that that's, you've decided I'm going to make this priority to go to therapy, to do these things. Mm-hmm. That give you more grace and patience with yourself. Yeah. And then with other people in your life. And yeah. we need that for ourselves. Real quick. Love not all the all real therapy, quicks. And then we'll wrap up. But not all therapy has to cost money. I used to do Celebrate Recovery for being True. codependent. Yeah, yeah. And that was something I went to every week. I did a group for nine months, mm. once a week. And it was awesome. We did. They do like groups sometimes where you have yeah. like a specific Support group and you group. go through yeah. several books. 
Yeah. And it was the best free therapy I could mm-hmm. have ever had. And it was a investment and commitment to mm-hmm. me. And it got me through a really rough time. That's amazing. So celebrate recovery anywhere. You, I've been to several places. They're all super amazing. And some, yes. And some churches have like sliding scale fees. Some yeah. places do. It yeah. doesn't have to cost all, it doesn't have to cost money. Or any, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to cost anything. It does have to cost time, though. It does. Yeah. 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 You okay. de- because you, you deserve, deserve it. it. You I deserve the time. The were you? Time. Okay. I was you trying were... to say you're worth it. You're, you're worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you are worth it, and you deserve it. We are worthy of love and belonging, most from ourselves and from other people around us who see who we are and mm-hmm. what we are about. And who want to support us in taking care of ourselves because we're our best selves when we are as healthy as we can be. Yes. We are kind to people. We are loving. We are patient. And uh, we're delightful to be around. We, I'm delightful. You're delightful. Well, you're delightful. <laughs> we're all just delightful people. We think you're delightful too, listeners. No, we don't. We, we, we don't hope know you. we don't know you. That was the, I tried to be all like welcoming. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know who you are. You, you could, could be, be a, a weirdo. You could be, you a could be terrible. <laughs> you could be a terrible person. Okay. We hope you're not. Okay, right. we're going to, till next week, uh, thank you for listening to 30 Wordy and Friendship. <gasps> next oh. week is our last episode of the season. Oh, season one will be, be ending. ending. We're going to announce when season two will begin. We're going to have some fun yeah. stuff planned. Uh-huh. We're still figuring it out, and we're excited to be on this journey with you. Have a great time. Bye. Bye.